I'm painting my own deathcore of Krieg army and I'm using all kinds of different paint schemes for my infantry. The regular guys are grey, specialists like Sion and Kasserkin are green, Gaunt's Ghosts are blue, officers are black and brass and artillery and tank crews are brown. Today we're doing the regular guys in grey. So my regular infantry they primed with Vallejo Dunkel Grau or Field Grey and this is a very nice dark grey that has a little bit of blue in it, is not exactly black and it's a perfect base layer and after this I just dry brush over it with grey sear and I'm doing this pretty heavily as you can see I am turning him pretty light grey and that's because I'm going to wash him after this and darken him down and I don't really want to do highlights after this because it will just save me a lot of time if I don't have to highlight this, uh, this mini or at least not his coat. And I'm using this uh, round dry brush from Green Star World, the uh, number five, because uh, it's round and that means the brush gets more into the recesses as well. And so you get more of those recesses colored as well and not just a highlight. It's, it's not a, a step where I'm highlighting the gray, highlighting the armor. It's a step where I'm giving it sort of a base layer. And well, like this, it's already done so fast. It's uh, almost completely done just on camera in a minute. So you can imagine how fast this paint scheme goes on a whole army of Death Corps of Creek. Now after this, I washed the Mini with some panel liner for grey and blue vehicles from AK Interactive. And this, as you can see, has a similar color as the original spray can. And this way I can get the recesses shaded properly. And I'm using panel liner. If you don't want to use enamels, you can use non-oil instead. But you don't get the same effect. You get nice dark shading, nice dark recesses. But panel liner, these enamels, generally speaking, they dry up very dusty and chalky. So they dry up and make it look like there's already a lot of dirt on the coat. And well, my Kriegers, they've been sieging for a few decades. So it makes sense if there's a lot of dirt and stains on their coats. And they've, they've been gone through quite a lot. If you wanna know more about my Krieg army, well, you've gotta subscribe because I'll do a big army showcase once I've finished with everything. Now, next up, time for a bit of cleanup on the armor, like the shoulder pads and the helmet. And I'm doing that with some Contrast Black Templar. And I like to use Contrast Black Templar for this because it makes it black, but it still gives a tiny amount of highlight, which is so easy to do. You don't have to dry brush anymore. You don't have to add any more highlights. And I'm doing these now already. I'm already doing this cleanup because it's time for the decals. And I know a lot of people aren't fan of decals, but I think the issue is that you're missing one crucial tool. And that's this. It's a decal adhesive. And this one says here, it's the softener type. You can also search for micro saw, which is kind of similar. It's an adhesive. It softens the decal, which makes it more flexible. So it fits to rounded uh, minis. So the shoulder pad of a Marine, it's very rounded and putting a flat decal on there is really hard to do right. With micro saw or this uh, decal adhesive from Tamiya, it's really easy to do. And so I'll show you. I have here a couple of decals. I'm just loading it up with water so they get loose. I put a little bit of this onto the shoulder pad just like a glue. So let's do the sort of the marking over here. And like a glue, it's on there. And now with my brush, I just pick up the decal and I put it on pl in place on there and just make sure it's in the right spot. And it will soften and will form to the shoulder pad without any problem. And this is already a rounded shoulder pad, just like a Space Marine shoulder pad. Vehicle decals are very easy because that's all flat. But this stuff, I think if you get this Working, if you have a little bit of experience with this, you practice a little bit, decals add a lot to your mini and you can make your minis really look a lot, lot better than if they were just regularly painted without the decals. Stuff like this, like these squad markings, I think they add so much to your Astro Militar units. They add so much to Space Marines as well, because regular Space Marines, the armor is, armor is a bit boring, right? If you just have a shoulder pad with no markings and now you can really show off their uh, the campaign badges as well. Something that Space Marines are really proud of is to have a campaign badge on their armor showing where they've been, what sort of campaigns they've taken part in. Similar to, of course, Astro Militarum, tanks and so on. Like, I think if you get this, get this skill using decals, see how easy it is for me now. This one's fine. I'll make sure it's in the right spot. The other one's fine. And then that's it. Now these decals for me, they stand out too much. They need a little bit of weathering. So that's what we do next. And I'm gonna weather the decals right away. And there's two options. With a little sponge, you dab on a little bit of the base paint layer, uh, base layer paint, that one. And in this case, just black. And it's fast, but it doesn't give you a lot of control. I really prefer 
getting a sharp hobby knife and just scratching out little parts of the decal, especially on these small minis. Scratching these off gives you a lot more control and you can work around the edges. You can also put your knife right in the center and just pull off bits of the decal. And this way with the knife, that's pretty much the only way if you have a less smooth base color. Like my painting style, if I would have to put a decal on the coat, for example, it's very rough looking. You can't dab on the base paint. You have to use a knife like this. So this is nine out of 10 times the way I do my decals, unless they're really big. Like if I do stuff on a vehicle, then I'll get a sponge and stipple on around the edges because you just have more control. Such a small decal using a sponge, it's just asking for problems. You have a little bit too much paint on your sponge and your whole decal is gone. And then what? You have to apply a new decal again. So with the knife, generally speaking, the best way. Time for some quick details. All the leather becomes Doomball Brown because this is a very nice reddish brown that uh, contrasts well with the black and the dark background of the armor. And it works well on all the other armor colors I'm painting my Krieg army because this will also stand out nicely against green and against black. So this is a good brown to work with and it allows for shading without then needing to highlight again. So Dumbo Brown on the leather. And then next, some flayed one flesh for all of the canvas bits. So these bands that he has around his shins, but I'm also going to use this for the backpacks. Now this guy doesn't have an actual Creed backpack. But this guy has, so this canvas top over here, that will become Flayed One Flesh and these packets over here. Just to get a little bit of contrast on the backpack and get a little light spot on his back as well. And I'm also doing all the hoses with this because I want them to stand out because it helps the gas mask stand out. And of course the gas mask, it's, mask itself also gets a layer of this Flayed One Flesh. A couple small details left. I'm gonna use Elysian Green for the grenades. So again, if I use the same color on grenades on all minis, they all get a sort of similar look. And next up, Rune Lord Bars for a bunch of metallic details like this little cylinder that they all have on their backpack, which is where they usually keep the gas mask when they don't have it on. I don't know when a Krieger gets to take his gas mask off, but hey, whatever. And I also use this for the Akula on the helmet and a little bits of pieces, the skull on the gun, for example. Just any metallic detail gets a little bit of Rune Lord Brass. That all gets weathered with some watered down Nihilac Oxide on all of these Rune Lord Brass pieces. And then next up, a little dry brush of silver on all the black metallic parts. So the gun, his backpack in this case, which is the Volcaster, but also his helmet, his armor pads on the shoulder and his bifocals, what's it called? Binoculars, yeah, that he's holding in his hand. Basically anything that's supposed to be metal. If you dry brush it with a bit of uh, silver, then it looks like it's battle damaged and scratched and dented, worn from use. And it also immediately makes the metallic parts look very different from all the other parts on the model. So if you're looking at the cloth, that looks like cloth and now the metal looks like actual metal. And all I did is just dry brush a little bit around the edges to make it look that the paint scraped off and the metal is showing through. And this way you get clearly like different materials on your mini and it really enriches the whole miniature a whole lot. If you stick to just contrast paints, for example, you have this issue where everything just looks like it's the same texture. It's made of the same material. With a little dry brush of metal, you immediately set these things apart. And it really helps a lot. And it's super quick. I'm almost done already. Just the helmet and then I'm done. Now for his boots, they get a layer of some Misi Desert. And I don't know if this is still a thing, but I think they look like Timberlands. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I quite like it. I like this color because uh, again, if you do this on all your Kriegs, and like I said, I'm painting them in different colors. If I do this on all of them, it ties them all together. And having light colored boots makes for great base color to put a lot of weathering and dirt on. If you give them black boots, you don't see the dirt that much. So some easy desert and you need a couple of layers of this because this doesn't cover. So no choice but to just keep going. We're almost done. Time for the lenses on the mask with a very small brush and a little bit of black Templar and this is easier than painting eyes, but somehow I still regularly manage to screw it up. But that's okay, if you just go too far with this, you can paint over it again with the Flayed One Flesh and then try to sort of sculpt the lens with uh, the Flayed One Flesh painted around it. And after this, basing. And I'm using Sterland Mud, which is a nice brown mud, because I think it 
comes closest to the sort of World War I feel that, that pacing can give. That completely worn out soil that is just bombed to absolute bits. That is muddy, that is dirty, that gets into everything everywhere, gets everything dirty. I think Sterling mud is the perfect base material for that. Now st this needs to dry and then I'm going to wash it, but not just the base, I'm going to wash everything in the same stuff. Because and now it's time for some streaking grime. And unlike usual, I'm just going to use a bit of a wash. So I'm getting a little bit of white spirits, mix it together here in the lid of my bottle. And I'm going to start on the base. And I'm first going to cover the base in the streaking grime and then slowly work my way up the mini towards more or less the belt. I don't want to get a lot of streaking grime up on the top because it will just darken everything. It will take away a lot of the contrast and I don't really want to get everything looking super dirty. It's not, it doesn't really make the miniature look that much better. But I do want a little bit of shading on the leather and on the grenade, for example. That one was very flat. Now it has a little bit of shade in there and a little bit on these hoses, but just a little bit. Don't go too dark. Don't use streaking grime as it's normally done with a thick layer and then reducing it. Instead, get a little bit of white spirits and just wash off as much as possible as soon as you apply it. And this is a very easy way to tie your miniature together with the base, because now all the dirt of the base, it's not just the texture paste that's on the shoes, it's the whole color is sort of onto the uniform as well. And I'll just keep going. And then with a fine brush, really fine tip, I'm taking some rust streaks, which is another good enamel, which is really nice dark brown rust. And I'm adding a little bit of that rust to the gun and all the other metal parts. I just want it to look like this guy has no time to clean his gun. He's going all out. Or maybe he picked up a gun that he found while getting into no man's land. And it's the only thing he has access to. So just a little bit of rust here and there, a little bit of rust on his radio as well. Of course, this guy is the spotter, so he needs a good radio, but that radio has probably seen 10, 20, 50, maybe a hundred other operators in the last five weeks. And this is just the one that he managed to pick up to give a couple coordinates for the next artillery strike. But yeah, a little bit of rust goes a long way also to break up these sort of metallic bits that are pretty big on the Krieg compared to the rest of the body. And then after this, I finish up the base with some puddles from AK Interactive. And puddles, that is a bottle like this. And what it is, is basically a gloss varnish, a gloss medium with some dirt in there. So it looks a little bit brown. You can see it here on my palette. Quite a lot came out because it <laughs> was clogged when I tried to get some on the palette. But we'll dry up a glossy as so it will look like there's dirty puddles. And I think it's great. It will make... The situation looked even worse for my Death Corps of Krieg army. It's not just mud, it's actually wet and it's very nasty soil to walk in. Now, I feel he's a little bit lonely, so maybe he needs a little friend with him on that base. So let's do that next. And if you want to know why my Death Corps of Krieg army has Cadian bits all over the bases, you'll just have to subscribe because I'll do a big army showcase once I'm done painting all of this. And I'll tell you more about the lore about my siege regiment. What's going on? Where are they? Why are they there? And why are there Cadians strewn all over the place? Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was pretty cool, pretty quick paint scheme that you can use to paint 100 Kriegers in no time. And maybe you'll enjoy this video next.